Well, isn't it great that we've been going chapter by chapter by chapter? There's all this judgment and all this sin and all this bad news. It's not something you can say, oh, look at what he's picked. We're just going chapter by chapter in order, and we're in Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand upon my watch. So Habakkuk is the smallest man in the world. He stands upon his watch. And he's a faithful man. With all this gloom that God is preaching, he stands still where he's lost to be. And set me upon the tower, the lookout, fortress, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, God, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So he's looking forward to God that's speaking to him, and he's looking to God to reprove him. There's some people out there, oh, you know, I don't sin. I've done nothing wrong. Since I've been saved, I've never sinned. I wish I could say that. Now, anyone who can say outside of Jesus Christ that they haven't sinned are those that are dead in the graveyard. Habakkuk acknowledges that even though he's called of God to preach a message, he still got things wrong with his life. And you saw that with Paul, too. He says, you know, at one part, he says, you know, that what I want to do, I don't. That which I want, don't want to do, I do. Paul acknowledged always that he was a sinner. John told us if we sin, we're to go to the Father and confess our sins. And the Lord answered me. Why would the Lord answer him? Because he's seeking the truth from God, no matter what it's about. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Not tell the vision, write the vision. Inspiration. Well, Habakkuk is just a man who wrote the Bible. Yes, he is. And God told him. How's that? In your face. Who told the scientists to write about evolution? Darwin, where did he get it from? He wasn't there. Write the vision. And make it plain upon tables. Our word would be tablet. You know, you go to the store, you buy a pad of paper, a tablet. That he may run that readeth it. Now, the Ten Commandments were written on tables. Now, here's the answer. Write it. Make it clear. Don't use big old fancy words. Stop going over the people's heads. You gotta carry a Bible and a dictionary. That he may run that readeth it. Run, go, do, not sit, not lay down, not rest. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. There's a specific time. But at the end it shall speak. So when it's done. Then you'll say, aha. We're going to see time with God. And not lie. God is unable, cannot, will ever tell a lie. Now Satan, John 8, 44, he's the father of lies. Though it tarry, It's gonna be a it's gonna be a while. Sound like the rapture for the Christian? God said he's gonna call his own, but doesn't it seem like it's been a while? But it's not a lie. Wait for it. <laughs> it's going to happen, but not yet. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Oh boy, doesn't it feel like it? God is in no hurry. He has no planning book, appointment book. 
His times are set and he's not going to change it. You can't change it. You can't tell God his dates and his time. Though men have tried and found to be liars. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just, uh oh, the just, Romans 1 17, Galatians 3 11, Hebrews 10 38. The just live by his faith. His faith, Psalm 7, verses 8. Ooh, I don't know what that number is. Salvation. Paul writes about it. The just shall live by his faith. There's no other form of salvation. It's not the just shall live by our works. The just shall live by religion. Yea, also, because he transgressed by wine. Because he transgressed by wine. Drinking wine is a transgression. It's a sin. Now, we're talking about now is we're looking at Nebuchadnezzar. He is a proud man. Look at the dream he had. Look at the image he set up. And yet the Lord dealt with his heart and he got right. Neither keepeth at home. He's not home all the time. He's out and about. Who enlarges his desire as hell. The Bible says hell is ever growing. He wants. He wants. He wants. And is as Dell. What is Dell? It's the end of human life. But it's not the end of eternity. As a human in death, you can do no more. You can't go back and change. You cannot go back and redo. And cannot be satisfied. And you find this in Proverbs, I believe it's 30. I mean, 29 or 30, you know, fire, it says it's not enough. Hell and death are just not happy. There were two people on this earth one time that did not have death and did not hell have hell. And the enemy wasn't satisfied. The enemy is not satisfied if you bury somebody today that somewhere in a hospital room someone closed their eyes to death. The enemy is not happy when one person falls off the hell today and a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth. There's no satisfaction for death in hell. As long as there are people. Hell and death, according to Revelation 20, end in the lake of fire with burning forever. But gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Nebuchadnezzar has been battling. He's a warrior. And Jerusalem is going to be his next mark. Shall not all these take up a parable against him? And taunting proverb. Taunting means a reproach with severe or insulting words. Against him. And say, woe to him that increases that which is not his. Stealing. Looting. Murdering. You think any other evil uh, verbs that something's not yours and now belongs to you?
Bible says, whoa. One of the big ten is thou shalt not steal. How hard is that? Anything and everything. Adam and Eve stole something. What did they steal? A piece of fruit that was not theirs. So you have in a grocery store, listen, I've worked in a grocery store. You have people that walk around eating bananas and grapes. And they're stealing. Because those things go by weight. Now, I'm not saying it was a banana. I'm not saying it's a grape. I'm saying people steal and they don't even realize they're stealing. They just think, oh, you know, I don't know what they think. I have had in my time, anytime I ate something at the grocery store, I made sure it was a barcode, a box, or something like that that would not be that you go up to the cash register here. I ate this or I had to drink this, and it would ring full price, full weight. There are people today who have lost things to the government, to other people. That's not rightly that person who got it. But we have a judge of all the earth that does right. That which is not his. How long? How long is this going to happen? At least one thing. All accounts will be settled at the great white throne judgment. Which is the last judgment. If it wasn't settled at the judgment seat of Christ. If it wasn't settled during Satan's rule here on the earth. If it's, it will be so the great white throne judgment, at least. And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. I don't know. I have no idea what that means. I'm reading my notes here. He's going to gain any way he can. And he doesn't care who he hurt. And God has something to say about that. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? That sounds good. Teeth. Pain. And awake that shall vex thee. Thou shalt be for booties unto them. Booty. Cash prize. We'll spoil. Target on your head. Look at all the goodies we can get. Because, okay, here's the reason. That thou hast spoiled many nations. Spoil again, you looted. And made bad. Look at that Nebuchadnezzar. All the raiment of the people shall spoil thee. So you're going to get what you... Where is all the treasures of... The hanging gardens of Babylon. Where was all that? What happened to Nebuchadnezzar's golden uh, image? There is parts of that golden image could maybe be in a bank in New York somewhere. It could be in a museum in Cairo. It could be on someone's shelf in China. It's not in Babylon. It's not on his gold image anymore. He's been looted because of men's blood, murder. And he's a king. And he's called to war. So was King David. And David told God one day, God, you know, I'm going to build a house for you. I, I live in this palace. I live among cedars. You're out there in that curtain. And God says, thank you very much. I am pleased with your offer, but your son will build my house. You can't because you have shed much blood. And for that, there's that violence again. There's that violence. For the violence of the land, of the city, 
and of all that dwell therein. The land, the city inside the land, and those that dwell in the city would be the county, the city, and the inhabitants thereof. Woe to him, is a woe, very saw woe to him that creases which is not his, stealing. Woe to him that covereth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. He's going to have an old age plan by evil ways. He's going to face his retirement on wickedness. And God says woe to that. If your retirement is based upon cheating and stealing and doing wrong, God has a promise with that. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people. He's killed families. He's killed soldiers. He's killed royalty. He's killed Killed and killed and killed. Verse 8. Men's blood. And has sinned against thy soul. Murder is against your soul. Murder is one of them sins in the Old Testament law. Now we're talking about a heathen. But for a, for a Jew, there was no offering. There was no sacrifice. Joab. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer. Somebody's gonna somebody's gonna speak up against you. Even if it's a building. Even if it's a wall. It's gonna get to the point that somebody is going to outcry against you, Nebuchadnezzar. Don't think you're going to get rid of everybody. Woe to him that buildeth a town. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. The pilgrims built Plymouth. Oh, here's the Spaniards. Here's the Europeans in Jamestown with blood. They are murdering people to build their town. That's what America did to the American Indians or the Native Americans, whatever you want to call them. We built our cities of America today on their blood. Uh, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. How long? America has cheated the Native Americans of their land that we may grow as a prosperous nation. And you're wondering why illegal aliens are coming and bothering us now? We were illegal aliens at one time. Did you know that? You know the first thing that Columbus on them did when they came to this new world? They stole slaves. That's not in history books, is it? Oh, we're all about the, the African slaves. What about the Jewish slaves in the Exodus? What about the Native American slaves in America? What about, what was it, Scranto? Who came up to the pilgrims and said, Welcome. Uh, how do you know English? Oh, yeah, back in 1620 and 16. A bunch of Europeans came over here and stole me and brought me to England. I, I managed to escape. And during that time, I learned to speak English. You want to talk about slave trade, let's talk about all the slave trades and not just one particular slave trade, okay? And we're going to talk about the slave trade. Let's talk about the truth. The Catholics were of Columbus and that slave trade and out to get gold. Africans were out to get Africans to bring them to bring to pick cotton.
Joseph went down with his family and helped Pharaoh in Egypt, and they in turn turned around and entreated them wrong and made them serve with rigor when they helped the nations from seven years of famine. Let's speak the truth, shall we? Can we get the truth? Sanctify them through thy word. Thy, thy, sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is true. Huh? How about that? Can we do that? Can we do the truth? Can't do the truth. Not favorable. And establish a city by iniquity. You know what the first city was built in the Bible? You know who did that? Cain. You know what Cain was? Take a guess what Cain was according to this chapter. He was a murderer. He killed his brother. The earth cried out to God, Vengeance! Because my blood was shamed, shared, uh, slain by my brother. The man that built the first city called Enoch was a vagabond. He had a mark put upon him. According to this, if this man we're talking about, the thou, verse 8, verse 10, thou, verse 9, him, if that is Nebuchadnezzar, and I believe it is, that's what I've read, could be wrong, but if it is Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon was built by blood and murder and iniquity. So is that where you're going to base your religion on? The Babylonian religion? That's where all the religions come from. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts? That the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. You ready for this one? You're working for hard labor and get the lowest pay possible. You're sweating and you're roasting and you're working and you get minimal wage for it. That's a perfect thing. Are you against no? Um, I am for a wage that matches the job that you do. Meanwhile, people don't do nothing, get extraordinary paychecks that they shouldn't get because they're not doing nothing. And there are people who are in the corporate ladder, don't even belong in the corporate ladder, that have nothing to do with that corporation, yet getting more money than someone's working hard flipping burgers. Yeah, I'm saying people flip burgers are doing a very hard job. Compared to a CEO that doesn't do nothing. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You know, all this, that, whoa, 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 murder. Oh, wow, look at that. Unfair pay, building by blood. You know what God, you know what God throws in the middle of there? One day we're going to have the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. A thousand year reign, a millennium, the Lord, it's going to be great then. That job is worth three grapes. Here, take five. Because I give you two more. Be no more 24-7. Uh, uh, You'll have at least one day of rest, according to God. Now, let's read this one together with these two verses. I read this today and I saw something quite interesting. Anybody think God's stupid? And I know how we use this verse, but let's look at what the verse says. 15 and 16. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him, and maketh him drunken also, that he may look upon their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. Woe unto him. Woe, here's another woe. Full woes. Woe unto him. Nebuchadnezzar. A warning to people. That giveth his neighbor drink, a liquor license. Woe unto him that gives his neighbor drink. You go up to your neighbor here, have a drink. It's on every television program. How much alcohol do you see on a television? It's loaded with it. 
guy comes, ding dong, here, you want a drink? Knock, knock, may I fix you a drink? Hi, babe, shall I get you a drink? Oh, let me change, while you change, I'll get me a drink. Oh, the television programs are. That put his, thy bottle, it's your bottle, to him. Now that him is in italics. Nothing wrong with italics. Okay. And make it him, italics, drunken also. You make him drunk. That thou mayest look on their nakedness. Now we will use that verse to say that a guy will give a woman drink to uncover her nakedness. That's the reason why you see a guy in a bar trying to hit on a woman. Right? Yeah. True. Sorry to say that. In my lost days, I've done that. I would have no other reason to buy a woman a drink, and I bought women drinks. That's all under the blood. Thou art filled with shame for glory. The glory to see their nakedness should be a shame. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. That's an interesting thing because it says him and foreskin. Foreskin is of a male. Put this thy bottle to him. And make his him drunken off. It looks like a sodomite uh, thing here. You're, you're, a man is giving a man a drink so he can see his nakedness. Whereas a man would not want to see a man naked. In order to have your sodomite ways, you got to get them drunk. Foreskin, I don't need to go into that to be uncovered. Foreskin would be also be non-Jewish, a Gentile. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee. For either sodomite relations or just to get your neighbor drunk to get him naked. Cup in the Bible like that means judgment. When Jesus prayed about that cup in the, in the garden, it wasn't death. Death is not that cup. Judgment of sin is that cup. There's a woman, a Mystery Babylon, she has a golden cup. And it's filled with the blood of the saints. Murdering. Sin. When a nation's cup overfloweth, you're in trouble. Shall be turned unto thee, and shame spewith, throw it up, shall be on thy glory. Ew. Imagine looking at someone's glory and there's vomit. Let me see your glow. Oh, glory, too. You stink. Go take a shower. You know what you you know what the first thing you do if you see a man drunk in a gutter in his own butt? You know what the first thing you would do? You look down and laugh. I've seen that. I've seen inside of a bar room. A drunken man in his vomit. You know, look at that idiot. Can't hold his liquor. Ha 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 ha. Wasted life. That's what God says. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee. Oh. And the spoil of beasts, cows, animals, horses, what you've taken, which made them afraid because of men's blood, a murder again. And for the violence again, look at that word keep coming up. Of the land, of the city, and all that dwell therein. Of the county, of the city, and the inhabitants thereof. I wish we could just end right there. I mean, isn't taking things not yours, isn't that bad enough? Isn't it you're, you're taking spoil and doing murder by doing it? Proverbs chapter 1. Isn't that, isn't that bad enough? Isn't it bad enough that you're going to rest your retirement on someone else's lies 
and, and fault and errors and abominations. Isn't that just bad enough? Isn't it bad enough <coughs> that you're going to build your town, your city on murder and iniquity? Isn't it bad enough that you're going to give someone a drink so you can uncover their neck? Isn't that just bad enough? Can't we just leave it alone, God? Do we have to touch religion? What profit it? The graven? Oh, God. Will you leave them images alone? You know Babylon was full of images? Nebuchadnezzar made one. What profit the graven image that the maker thereof has graven it? Who's the God? The graven image or the maker thereof? You take a graven image and you worship it as God, but it was made by a man. The molten image. Graven means you get in it and you fasten it, you engrave it, you use cutting tools. Molten image is you make a mold and you melt something. And whatever you melt, whether it be plastic, well, they didn't have plastic, wax, whether it be metal, whatever you melt, you pour it into the mold, you wait for it to dry, and then you have a solid, a molten image. And a teacher of lies. You know what God says about anybody who's involved with imagery and worship of them? You're a teacher of lies. Pray to this statue and you can sell your house. Pray to this beads and your feet as a postman will be highly blessed. If you say this and your, your house would be sold and your family would be blessed and forget Christopher. He's found too many times in the junkyard. God throw him in the car. Blah, blah, blah. God says it's all lies. You know, Catholics have saint days. There's a, there's a saint for a particular day. Like St. Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, December 11th is St. Nicholas and blah 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 you know how many St. Days there are I'll give you a clue 365 days 365 days of saints and images and idols every day to every day of the year for a Roman Catholic there's a different saint and look what God has to say about it. it's a lie Today is a certain Patriot Saint Day, and God says it's a lie. That the maker of his works trusteth therein. The guy makes a God and entrusts the God. But well, what if I had a bad day? Hey, here I'm making these shrines to whatever God. I have a bad, you know what? I'm really mad at this God today. This one, I'm going to have him make a big nose. Ah, I'm going to give you a big nose, God. Oh, holy big nose God. Oh, holy big. What? You made that thing. I think Jeremiah said the guy cuts a, cuts a tree down. He cuts half of it. He burns some of it in the fire to make a dinner and keeps himself warm. And he takes the residue of it and makes a God. Oh, no. Oh. And look what God says about it. Look what God. God, you are so... So, so bad. He says, Behold, wait a minute. The maker of his work trusts therein, he trusts in the God that he made to make dumb idols. I like what God said. And that don't mean stupid idols, that means idols. That cannot talk. Remember Jesus healed a, healed a dumb person and he spoke. You know God just said there? Your idol can't say a word. I have a God who writes, who written 66 books. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, God spoke it. Israel heard God speak the Ten Commandments orally. Come on, God. Say something. 
Go get knick knack fatty wax and ask them to talk. They can't. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have ears they cannot hear. Eyes they cannot see. And God calls them dumb idols, unable to talk. Woe, oh, another woe, unto him that saith to the wood, oh, awake. Yule log? Are you involved with the Yule log? That's against the Bible. The evergreen tree? You know about the evergreen tree. You know about what's behind that, don't you? God says, whoa. Now, how about this one? Ready for this one? Who would think this one? To the dumb stone. Remember, dumb means you can't talk. Not stupid. Stupid. To the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. What do you think that would be today? How about a weather rock? This weather rock's telling us we're no, not really telling you nothing. Weather rock, pet rock, and all that, God says, whoa. You know what idols and imagery is made out of? Wood and rock. A woman's best friend is what? A rock. A stone. Gemstones. God says. Aren't they supposed to tell you what your future are? Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver. You decorate it. You make it pretty. You make it more valuable. <clears throat> and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. Remember God made Adam? And Adam just laid there. He, did, he laid there to God breathe his spirit, and then man became a living soul. You know what's going on with these idols and images? There's no life. They ain't breathing. They ain't got lungs. But the Lord, the but means your images, your idols, and your stones, and your wood. But the Lord is, I'll cleave to the old wooden cross. Why would you? I want to cleave to Jesus Christ. That old wooden cross, it sounds like it's a tribute to the cross and the cross alone. But the Lord is in his holy temple, alive and well. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let everybody be dumb just as these idols and images are and worship him. You're the dumb one. And God is not. God has to say something about these images. 